Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to provide a short demonstration of the chi-squared test of association using Stata. And in particular, I'm going to be demonstrating analysis of a 2x2 two two contingency table. Now before we get started, let me note that underneath the video description, you will find a link to the Stata data file that I'm working from, so you can download the data to follow along. Additionally, you will find a link to a PowerPoint that is going to provide more details concerning interpretation of results. So uh, mainly in this video, I'm going to be focusing in on the procedural aspects of running the analysis, but see the PowerPoint for more information concerning how to interpret various pieces of the output. Um, also, the PowerPoint provides examples involving higher order con contingency tables. So one example involves a 2x4 contingency table, and the other example involves an analysis of a 4x6 contingency table. So let's go ahead and get started with our current uh, demonstration. So the data that we are going to be working from is coming from the 2018 General Social Survey. And what we're going to be doing is just testing whether a person's gender identification uh, is associated with their uh, views concerning gun permits. So let's open up the, the uh, data file. We'll just go under Data, Data Editor, and Stata and go under our edit mode. We have our gender identification variable right here and this gun law variable right here. So the gender identification variable is coded uh, one for identified as male, two for identified as female. We have this gun law variable right here which is coded zero for opposed uh, gun permits and one for favoring gun permits. So to carry out our analysis, uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. We're just going to use our drop downs and go to statistics, then go to summary tables and tests, go down to frequency tables, and then go over to two-way table with measures of association. So we'll click on that. Uh, where it says row variable, I'm going to select gender ID, and under column variable, I'm going to select gun law. And I'm just going to go ahead and select uh, the various options uh, that I discuss in more detail within the PowerPoint. So I'm going to select Pearson Chi-Square. There's Fisher's exact test if I wanted that. Uh, likelihood ratio Chi-Square if that was something I wanted. Um, Kramer's V which is a measure of association between the two variables. For cell contents I'll uh, select Pearson Chi-Square within column relative frequencies, within row relative frequencies, relative frequencies, and expected frequencies. And then I will uh, press the OK button. So we'll do that and take a look at our output. So at the very top of our output, you'll notice that we get the syntax uh, reflecting our, uh, uh, the model that we've specified as well as our various options. So you'll notice that if we're going to use syntax, we're going to be using to run this analysis, we would use the tabulate function or tabulate command. We would follow that up with the, um, the row variable and then the, the uh, column variable names. Then you can see we have a comma, and then we have our various options uh, that are given. So you can see right here we have um, this contribution to chi-square. Uh, you can see next we've got um, cell right here, which is requesting cell percentages. Uh, this is requesting the chi Pearson chi-square uh, test. Uh, right here we've got column. This is reflecting column percentages. Row over here, which is reflecting row percentages. Uh, Exact is used if you want to request Fisher's exact test. Uh, right here we've got expected, which is requesting expected frequency counts for each cell. And then we've got LR chi-square, which is uh, requesting the likelihood ratio chi-square test. And then the V is requesting Kramer's V. So we'll scroll down. You can see we have our contingency table with a number of values included. And the way that you can uh, identify those values is just by checking out the key that's given right here. So the first value uh, in each of the cells, you can see that we have the observed frequencies. Uh, then the, the second value uh, is going to be the expected frequency. So really briefly, if we look at our table, you can see we've got our row variable gender identification, and our column variable is our gun laws variable uh, with uh, values of our levels reflecting opposition or favoring gun uh, permits. So among those individuals who identified as male, we had 131 who indicated opposition to gun 
permits and 226 who indicated favoring gun permits. The expected uh, frequencies are 102.6 and 254.4. Among persons identifying as female, we had 99 who uh, were observed to oppose gun permits and 344 indicating favoring gun permits. Uh, the expected counts were 127.4 and 315.6. And let me just kind of note that when I refer to expected frequency or expected counts, well, what this is is the expected frequency if there is no association between the two variables. So just keep in mind that with the chi-square test of association, um, the null hypothesis is that there is no relationship or no association between the two variables. So what we're essentially doing then is comparing observed frequency counts versus those that are expected um, if there is no relationship. So then you can see in our cells uh, we have the chi-square contributions. So that's uh, this uh, third row of information within uh, within uh, the, the male gender identification. Uh, so you've got 7.8, 3.2, then for females it's got uh, 6.3 and 2.5. And if you sum those values up, they actually sum up to the Pearson chi-square. So the chi-square contribution is just essentially uh, an indicator of the degree to which a cell is contributing to the overall chi-square value. Uh, next, we've got row percentages. So, so we could say then that among uh, individuals identifying as male, we had 36.69% indicating an opposition to gun permits. 63.31% uh, is indicating favoring gun permits. Among individuals identifying as female, we had 22.35% uh, indicating opposition and 77.65% indicating favoring of uh, gun permits. Uh, then you can see that we have our column percentages. So, uh, so we could say then among those individuals who oppose gun permits, 56.96% uh, identified as male and then the remaining 43.04% identified as female. Among individuals who indicated favoring gun permits, uh, we had 39.65% indicating f uh, being male and the remaining percentage indicating uh, identifying as female. So when you scroll down to the very bottom, you'll notice that we have the Pearson chi-square uh, test value that's given, which is the 19.8648. That's based on our data. Um, and you have the p-value that's given, so that's the probability value. So you can see that the Pearson chi-square uh, test is indicating the, that there is a statistically significant relationship between gender identification and views concerning uh, gun permits. Uh, you can see on the next uh, line right here we've got the likelihood ratio chi-square that's given. That's the um, va uh, chi-square value of 19.8094 and then the p-value. So that's also indicating statistical significance. Uh, you can see down at the bottom you've got Fisher's exact test uh, because we had requested that. So that would also be indicating statistical significance. And then we have Kramer's V, which is given right here. So that happens to be 0.1576. This value uh, does range between 0 and 1. And in the context of a 2 by 2 contingency table, that would equal the phi coefficient between uh, reflecting the association between the two variables. So the phi coefficient will equal the Pearson's correlation between two dichotomous variables. So basically you can see this uh, association is on the small side. Now I do want to mention that Kramer's V um, or interpretation of Kramer's V gets a little bit more complicated in higher dimensional tables but um, just uh, see my PowerPoint for examples involving um, those higher dimensional tables. Now one other thing, if it's a case that you would like to obtain uh, the residuals for the cells, um, you can see that you're not able to do that directly uh, using the approach that we've just taken, but you can uh, generate the cell residuals by using the, chi, uh, the tab chi package. So to show you what I mean by that, we're going to go down to the command line and we're going to type search and then tab underscore chi and then hit enter. And so when we do this, you'll see that a couple of packages come up, uh, but we're going to select this tab chi, uh, this, this first one. So we're going to select that right there, 
and I'm going to click on install right here. So uh, basically it's already been installed but this is just kind of walking you through how to do it. So now I've installed it. If we go back you can see that if you click under uh, these options you've got uh, various help menus and so forth. So I'm going to close this out and just uh, what we're going to do is just run rerun the analysis but request the um, the residuals. So where it says command I'm going to type in tab chi oops if I can spell it correctly tab chi and then I'm going to select my gender ID variable I'm just going to go over to the right here and just uh, I could type it in but I'm just going to go ahead and select it gender ID and there's there's my gun law variable that's given right there I'm going to type a comma in and then next I'm going to type in um, I'm going to type in uh, raw then I'm going to type in Pearson and then I'm going to type in C-O-N-T and then I'll hit enter and so now what you'll see is that that uh, within the contingency table I'm going to have the observed frequencies so those are the observed frequencies are expected frequencies that are given so that's uh, these values right here you'll see I've got the raw residual which is just basically the difference between the observed and expected uh, cell frequencies. You'll see I have uh, Pearson residual. This is basically uh, the standardized residual. So there's these values here and these values here. And then we uh, have the contribution to chi-square. Basically that was uh, reflected by this addition uh, to our commands. So that's reflected in um, the last uh, bit of information within um, each of our cells. Uh, at the very bottom you can see that we've got the Pearson chi-square and our likelihood ratio chi-square that's given here. I do want to mention uh, that with the Pearson residuals or basically the standardized residuals that uh, I can use those to test whether there's a significant difference between the observed and ex expected uh, frequencies within cells. So basically I can use the absolute value of the Pearson's residual in order to test that difference. So if the absolute value of the Pearson's residual is greater than say 1.96 then there would be a significant difference between the observed and expected cell frequencies. So you can see that uh, the cell for persons identified as male who oppose gun permits there's a significant difference between the observed and expected uh, uh, cell frequencies among individuals identifying as females you can see that there is also a significant difference between the observed and expected cell frequencies now uh, with respect to the uh, favoring gun permits um, uh, category you can see that uh, for those individuals identified as male that the Pearson residual is less than 1.96 so there's not a significant difference uh, between um, the observed and expected cell frequencies for persons identified as uh, male who are favoring gun permits and the same would go for persons identifying as female because you can see right here uh, our Pearson's residual is less than 1.96 Okay, so that uh, pretty well wraps up this demonstration. Once again, I do want to encourage you to download a copy of the PowerPoint. It, it does go into a lot more details uh, than I've really covered in this video. Um, but um, at any rate, I appreciate you watching, and you guys have a great day.